All right, so we're off to Rosewood today. Now that's where the first drawing in our book is. Now I know that building has been demolished. But I'm not going to take you and show you anyway, just show you the site. And I haven't been that way for a while, so you know, there might be something else there. I don't know, we'll have a look. And then on the way back, we're going to call into Grandchester where the truck and tree is. And where the house that was removed and sent to, well relocated to Mount Alfred. We're going to have a look at that one as well. Um, and also, if there's nothing there that I really think is going to be worthwhile drawing, well then what I'm going to do is, there's a couple of little spots just on the same property that we may have a look at. Something that might be of interest. Now I'm not doing anything illegal here, I'm actually driving on the, on the side of the road. It's quite a long stretch, about a couple of hundred yards, it's just off the road. So now, yeah. although today is the first day of winter, it's a beautiful day and in fact it's actually the warmest it's been for, the, oh, for at least the last week anyway. It's been pretty cold, especially for us, we're used to the, the hot weather. We don't get snow or any, you know, a little, might get a, a little frost but that's about it. But it has been pretty chilly, I've been going to go for my walks, I've been wearing my hoodie and my, my beanie. But anyway, that's about it for now, we better get off the road before I get into trouble for driving on it. <laughs> I'm not driving on the road. This is the town where, where I drew the first picture that's in the book. It's here in Rosewood, so I thought we'd just come down and have a look. It's a busy little town. There's a lot of character in this town. I've actually done about three or four commissions here in Rosewood. They used to do the markets here on a, on a, on a, on a, on a Saturday. I think it was the third Saturday of the month. Alright, we'll go around and have a look. It's, on the, it's actually on the other side of, of the main street. Okay, now here's the actual site where the building was. It wasn't on that concrete pad there. It was more over to the left. I don't know what happened to the tree that was in the picture. <laughs> in fact, it probably wasn't even true. I'll probably put that tree in because I've got to put trees in. But there's nothing here really to, to draw. But I just thought I'd bring you and show you anyway. Now, one thing I noticed with Queensland, you get these signs all around. And you said to me, I think, so where's all the flood come from? Where's all the water come from? But it floods, believe me. The only other thing that we have in Grandchester is the pub. I've been in there a couple of times. Nice establishment, they have nice food. You find most of these country pubs are like that though. Really worthwhile you know, falling in. Won't be calling in today though. <laughs> I'd love a cold beer though. But early, I'll wait till later on. Well that's the chimney there. It would have been great if the, the windmill was still standing, the old water tank, the old shed. Anyway, just up the road where that tree is, that's where the house is. That's where the house that's been um, relocated. It's right in there, just on the other side of the tree. So we'll go up there and have a look, and then across the road from that is where the truck and tree is. There it is. There is the truck and tree. So I'll zoom it in. There's a bit more overgrown than when I drew it three years ago. I believe it's grown up through the through the tray actually. If you look over here, this over that side of that hill is Laidley. But we're gonna be going up over there shortly. So much bush. This is why they the bushfires are always a problem, or always a worry. Because it could they could strike anywhere. Been lucky here, been very fortunate, but yeah, all it takes is a lightning strike, a spark from a vehicle going past, you know, it could be a muffler, a backfiring, or a number of things to start it off. And it can also be an arsonist. We get those as well. So we go over and just, like I said, all, everything's be, beyond the fence. So we never go onto the property, unless we've been invited. So there we have it there. And to me, it just looks like it probably is the kitchen, because you see the, the chimney up the top there. The big tree there. Well, they call them bunya trees, I think. Well, anyway, that's what's left of it. 
why they didn't take that bit, I don't know. Looks like there's a doorway over there on the right. That, that, actually, that might make an interesting drawing, actually. We'll go from the top to the bottom, just see, and I'll take a couple of snapshots as well. It might be worth drawing this, but when I get back to the studio, I'll have a good look at it and just decide on what would be the best way to do it, if we are going to do it. All right. Well, hopefully we've got enough footage now. So I'm packing up the gear. We're going to head back to the studio. And I'll go through everything and just see, you know, what we can, what we can take from it. We'll see you back at the studio. Well, after much deliberation, I have decided that this is going to be the scenario that we're going to draw. Okay, so I've done. Started off it was what started off as a grid drawing, and I, I realised that I really wanted to move things around a bit. So I left the grid on there, but I've just changed it to how I want it to be. It's called artistic license. So what I've done, I've gone in and just done roughly, just done the outline where things are going to get going. Yes, and of course, as usual. It's not until you start drawing that you realise that the the reference photo is not as clear as what you were hoping it would be. So anyway, we're just going to go with what we've got. I'm just putting in where the bushes are going to go. And there's a sort of a, like a hedge going through here. But the main thing I've got in I've wanted this post and rail, the old fireplace, the old water tanks and just the corner of the shed. So I think we're going to have quite enough to go on with. And over here, there's like a tree going on here. And it is quite a bit of bush behind here. So it's going to be quite a quite a big drawing, to be honest. A bit more than I sort of thought. But anyway, we'll give it a shot. Well, I suppose we could start at the front and work back. So maybe that's what we'll do. So now that I've got a basic line drawing in, we don't really need, we don't really need uh, the grid. But anyway. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at doing is I'm just finished off the line drawing, getting all the outside edges and everything in. I've just gone into time lapse because it's, you know, it just makes it a bit easier to watch it all because it's a lot of details. But it's pretty slow going. So anyway, we've, we've done the out, the out, well most of the outline and the line drawing. So I'm just putting in the underdrawing. Not too much detail, just so we know where, where everything's going to go. Now doing the water tanks here. Now obviously these tanks aren't used anymore. The, they in pretty bad condition, but there was actually two of them, and I sort of had, to, I, I realised that when I took the photos, but it wasn't so obvious in the pictures, in the reference photo, so, and actually that's, it usually happens with the reference photos, so even though I took the, these photos myself, still found that there was a lot of places that I couldn't see. You know, it's too dark in some places. Like underneath the water tanks, for example, uh, it's a bit hard to try and see exactly where all those uh, pieces of wood that are holding it actually actually holding it up, where they, you know, where they, which way they lie and they're going, because you can see some of them have fallen down. But anyway, we just we just do it how we think it goes. Obviously, there's a lot of looks like a lot of rust in that in, the, in these tanks. Anyway, I love rusty old things. Putting in quite a bit of detail on this. I just thought we'll do as much as we can. now and because um, quite a bit of this I'm, I've had to do off camera 
because it would just take too long. I mean, as it is now, I'm thinking it's going to be at least two, maybe three videos. But, you know, it doesn't matter how long it takes. I don't mind anyway. structure itself is, is, is in such disrepair that it couldn't be used again anyway. I don't know if there's something in the in the ground here or I notice you see quite a few things on wings, you know like letter boxes and gateways and signs and stuff. They seem to move on to a lean. It's like we're in a big swamp or something. Having said that, I have had to dig a couple of holes around home and it wasn't the easiest of digging in places. Mind you, most of that was because of tree roots and that. The soil itself is pretty soft. It's doing that little... The shed on the side now, that may have been part of the house, original house. Because it's sort of the front of the of the drawing but and then the, and then the chimneys at the back so maybe that was the end of the house in between might have got burnt down I don't know there's no there's nothing there to suggest that anything was burnt or charred but anyway looks like it's been boarded up the windows been boarded up there Yeah, we can only draw what we see. Yeah, that bit there. Seems a bit strange. So, yeah, this would appear to be a window. That must have been a window there originally. A bit of shade in. Yeah, Greenchester. Well, this is on the outskirts of Greenchester, but in the Grandchester area. Uh, it's got a population of around about 700, 750. I don't know where they all live because when you drive through there it's only like not a lot of houses there. That might, must include the, the rural area as well I'd say. They're putting in the chimney now. Now this, is, this has been all made out of bricks but looks to me like it's been plastered over and in quite a lot of places the plaster has actually come off so just going through now, just trying to put the, the plate where you know where I'm going to put bricks and plaster. There's a oh about five ten k's up the road. Um, there's a there's what they call um, spices, the Lost Valley River. Something like anyway, but anyway, it's, it's a, a restaurant and they, they cook everything on the barbecue. The, the old original homestead where, the, where they had the actual kitchen and everything, where they provided all the food and well, where they cooked everything, actually got burnt down. And it was funny, I was actually there. Um, we did a market one time and they held it at the, the Spices restaurant. And what a beautiful, beautiful place! And, and I actually thought about seeing the, the, the manager about, you know, whether they'd like to, me to do a commission to draw the old building. I don't know how old it was, but it was old. And uh, about a month that, after we had the event, the place got burnt down. Didn't even get a chance to have a talk to them about it. I met them. You know, I didn't want to say too much just until I sort of got to get a feel and find out what people want to do but anyway so now they, they, don't, they don't have a big kitchen they have it's all cooked undercover but outdoors on the barbecue and they reckon the food is beautiful Let's go there one night check it out okay, we're just slowly building away here Now 
Yeah, this, is, this is the end of the room, so we're going to get everything in place. There'll be a bit of rubbing out to do and straightening up. That's alright. Really enjoyed doing this Ravenna. She did all the research, and it was hard work at times trying to find out who owned what. And, and then we had a couple of cases, or well, one particular case, I remember we, we, found, we found out who owned it, and they asked us not to put it in the book because apparently there's a big family dispute going on who owns the property. And, and I, I actually drew it as well, but yeah, we never made the book. So, and, yeah, well, you know, that's just one of those things. I'm just putting it in the grass here. I don't know, I thought I'd just do the front bit first. Um, as a... underdrawing, but with quite a bit of detail. You know, it, might, it might look all, all good. I want to wait until I see. See, I've got, I've blocked it all in and all the foliage in. So we'll just see what it's going to look like once I've got all that background in. I wanted to put the grass in first just to give me an idea where things can, well what I can put in, it's going to look good. I'm using my 2B here and just putting in the darks. I'm not going to film all of this because it's the same and there's a lot to do so we'll do a lot of it off camera and I'll come back to show you, you know, the details of it all. Here's just what we call little squigglisms or scribblisms. Now I do foliage. And as, you know, as I keep saying, it's all about building up layers. It's a beautiful area here, up sort of at the background here, the train runs through there, the coal train that goes through, oh, I don't know, three or four times a day, it's got 40 carriages, and it, it's just, that's about all it's used for, I think, that line. Well, I've decided to leave it here for now. Well, it's slowly coming together. It's like all things, you know, we've just got to take our time and, and just build up the layers. And as usual, it's probably going to take a bit longer than I, you know, than I first anticipated, but I don't mind. You know, I actually really look forward to doing these drawings. You know, my other playlist with the Fun Time Family Art, I love that. I really do. But I also love doing some bit more detailed sort of drawings. And of course, with YouTube, you know, now that I'm doing two two videos a week, that takes up all my time. And unfortunately, the art side of things gets a little bit left behind. So I try my best to do the best art I can for you guys to watch. But there's so much time spent doing the editing. And, and of course, the, my computer takes up so, you know, the videos take up so much memory on my computer. I've got, well, one, three, four, four, well, about six terabytes. <laughs> I don't, you know, if someone could tell me how to deal with all that, then I'd really appreciate it. Now this week I'd like to give a shout out to a bloke I've been following, he's from Malaysia, I've been following him for, well, since I've been on YouTube over 12 months, he, was, he came along and supported me from the start, and I've really appreciated his support. And his channel is Shaq Kuyok, and I hope I've said that right, Shaq. Anyway, that's from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he's got some real good stuff. He, he draws on like a flax type thing. I don't know. I'm not too sure what it's called, but it's it's, it's native native materials. Yeah, and he's got a blog as well. You can check that out. And I think he does a lot of work sort of behind the scenes for the indigenous people. He's had a recent exhibition. Yeah, so I think you'll find his channel very interesting. I do. So I'll leave a link down below in the uh, in the description. And please check his channel out because I know you will enjoy it. 
It's just a different, different style of art, obviously, to mine. But in my eyes, all art is beautiful. In more ways than one. You get, you get to see, I believe anyway, that every, every piece of art that you see is actually a part of the artist. But anyway, don't be shy. Give me a like. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. And if you like my content, please feel free to subscribe. It costs nothing. Ring that bell, that way you get notified every time a new video comes out. And we'll see you in the next one. Part 2 of my vlog, Beyond the Fence, in and around the Lockyer Valley.